Hi everyone, Yvette Rose here and guys, welcome to Becoming an Emotional Essentialist mini workshop. Guys, I'm really looking forward to this here with you today. So without further ado, let's go. So let's dive into this workshop for today, because today is going to be all about how to become an emotional essentialist. So how fun is that? Now, what inspired me to actually make this workshop? I actually read a book called The Essentialist, and this book was wonderful. I absolutely loved it. And when I read it, it was all about how to just let go of things in your life. I mean, like assets or not assets, but I mean, like just not to be overcrowded, just really taste take what you need long story short. So what I realized was when I was reading this book is that my life already looked like that. And I loved it because I've been a nomad traveling for almost 12, 15 years with a small carry-on suitcase, my backpack, which my entire office was packed into, you know, running shoes, flip-flops and one nice pair of shoes and, you know, winter and summer outfits that I could mingle. And that was my life. And I was happy with that. It worked really well. I felt light. I was free. I could go where and when I want, how I want. And it was wonderful. But what I realized was I was still carrying emotional baggage with me. So even though physically my life felt light, I, of course, still had my emotional baggage that felt tremendously heavy, a lot of burdens and weight that I was kind of like dragging with me. Now, when I realized when I'm back, now I'm here in Bali and I have a home, I have a daughter, now I have an office again, I have my art studio there, I have, you know, furniture and all these type of things. But what I realized was the lifestyle that I had was so fundamentally important because the more I allowed myself to get used to just being happy with simplicity, being used to and just having, really having what I need meaning my life is still very comfortable, but I have everything that I need. And for me, it was important to continue to bring that, that vibe, that vibrancy of freedom with me, even though I have a home again. And so I looked at ways of how can I do this? So I bought a house, fully furnished. I literally moved in with my suitcase. So, and even if though I do have an office, it's easy for me to donate and just literally pack my suitcase and my daughter, my husband, and we go. So I've learned the art of not becoming overly attached, right? That was huge for me because my childhood was the opposite, right? So I was overly overcompensating in my life by becoming overly attached to people, circumstances, objects, assets, things that I just didn't even really need. But I couldn't let it go because it reminded me of something special or it reminded me of some kind of memory that I had or it gave me some sense of emotional fulfillment or it made me feel a certain way. So all my power, all my emotions, all my experiences was just sitting here outside of myself and nowhere near with me. And that is where I lost my power. And I became the hamster in the wheel. Because I continue to try to create circumstances, people, places, things that I can attach to that would give me that fulfillment because I couldn't find that within myself. Hence why I had such a fear of letting go of things outside of me back before I started traveling because of that lack of fulfillment that I felt. And the more I started to work on it, the more I started to practice detachment, not in a destructive way. You know, you have some people that go and sell their goddamn cars, their houses and everything, and they just go, now what? And I'm like, <laughs> everything in life needs a plan and it needs to have a conducive, constructive plan that's actually going to work, right? It's not just all about letting go and saying, oh, that's what it feels like. Okay, great. So um, shit, now what? That's not how it works. So basically from what I have learned, is the art of detachment. And when I say the art of detachment, I mean that in a way 